As promised, this tutorial will be about Magento, which is Google's art and music extension for TensorFlow. I'm going to play some examples of the final product first, followed by instructions on how to install, train, and generate with your own network using a free Google Cloud instance. Because my surname is Scottish, my first training set is a collection of MIDI files from this Scottish folk song website. This is what the network sounded like after training for a few minutes. This is what it sounded like after an hour or so. So this is around the time I went to sleep. The next morning, this is what it sounded like. Each song fragment can be primed with an initial note or a series of notes. I primed with multiple notes for a few different songs, and most of the time the net was still able to work out a resolution. I haven't been to a Highland Games Festival in like 10 years, but I still know Scottish music generally sounds like... and like... Many of the input midis were intended as bagpipe songs, but I don't think Magenta cares about the assigned instruments. This resulted in some output that was uncharacteristically repetitive for piano, but I thought it still sounded nice. I then trained a new network on a bunch of Disney MIDI files from this website. To avoid a copyright claim, I'll just use this adorable picture from a Disney-ish South Park episode as the background. A few hours into training, it was producing songs that would seem to awkwardly flip between melodies. Maybe Disney isn't really a distinct enough genre to use here, and that's the problem. So that song was both annoying and interesting, if that's even possible. This next one sounds like a Disney princess theme or something. And then this one sounds like someone trying and failing to play a blues song. I noticed that seeding with higher notes seems to result in music that sounds like songs from the training set that are in a similar octave. Here's a song I seeded with something close to middle C. And here's something I seeded with notes an octave or two higher than middle C. And 
And here's one last clip that sounded like the theme song to like a medieval Game Boy game or something. <laughs> The first thing you'll need is a free Google Cloud account. I explain how to sign up for one of these in my first video. You'll also need to open port 8888 for all your VMs. Then you'll need to upgrade to a paid account and request GPU access. I explain how to do this in my second video. You can follow the previous instructions until you've created an Ubuntu VM with a GPU. Use Ubuntu 16.04 as your OS and use at least double the 10 gig default disk size. Once your machine starts up, the automatic driver install script may fail. I think this is because Facebook open sourced its own machine learning library around the time I published my last video, and NVIDIA started releasing updates optimized for the new system. Uh, Google has probably updated their startup script by now, but in case it hasn't, you can just enter the script manually as soon as your VM is created. The only change I had to make was to add sudo behind one line. Now you should apt get update and then install the IPython and Python 3 pip packages. This is only so you can get the Jupyter Notebook. Everything else here should be installed for Python 2.7 because that's the version that Magenta uses. So now sudo apt get install python pip without the 3 and then sudo pip3 install Jupyter. You should also install scipy and the related pip packages as well as the TensorFlow compiling prerequisites from the last video. I'm still trying to keep these tutorials platform independent, so in theory you should be able to do everything you see here on any OS or even on a mobile device. Uh, this is why in my second video I suggested you install the Jupyter Notebook and use it to upload your CUDNN library tarball. Once you've got the file in your home directory, you can run the same unpacking commands from my second video. Now edit your bash file with nano. I noticed a glitch where the cursor position changes in the browser command prompt after I exit nano. Now reload your bash file, install bazel with the same commands as before, and then use git to clone the tensorflow github directory. At this point the instructions differ again from the previous video because I'm going to assume that since magenta and tensorflow are both owned by google, they're probably tested for compatibility. So don't use the checkout command, but if you run into problems later, you can try using it to compile an earlier build. Now navigate into the TensorFlow folder and run dot slash configure. You can pretty much just hit enter and use the default settings for every question except you have to answer yes to the one asking if you'd like to build with CUDA support and then also type 3.7 when you're asked about the compute value of your CPU. Now you can build TensorFlow with GPU support. Then build the wheel, same as before, and install it using the pip command, not using pip3. Finally, run sudo pip install magenta to grab the current magenta build. Quit your SSH window, and then reopen it. Now you want to zip some MIDI files on your local machine, and use your Jupyter Notebook to move them over to your cloud instance. And then sudo apt-get install zip, if you haven't already. And then use the unzip command on your newly uploaded training folder. Alternatively, you can run the wget command followed by the URL for an online MIDI file or a zip archive. First, you have to put the training MIDIs into a specific folder and then modify the relevant arguments of the rather cumbersome convert directory to note sequences command so that Magenta knows where to find the training MIDIs. The Magenta GitHub scripts directory readme page explains this command in more detail. The examples in the description of this video will assume that your files are in a folder in your home directory titled MIDIs. When I recorded this, you can see the folder I used was called bagpipe underscore MIDIs. You'll also need to specify a .tf record output file that will be the input for the next part. These next commands are explained in more detail in the readme page of the melody underscore rnn folder in the models folder in the magenta git directory. There are options for polyphony and improv in the other folders, but this tutorial is just going to be about generating melodies. Now run the melody 
rnn create dataset command with one of the three configuration options. I used basic underscore rnn for the bagpipes and lookback underscore rnn for the Disney tunes for some variety. Obviously without any controls I can't tell how different the types are but they all make music so any of them should work. Make sure the input argument is the tf record file from the last command. The output directory argument specifies where the sequences that you'll be using for training are going to go. Then the eval ratio argument specifies what fraction of sequences will be used for testing versus training. The default is 0 0.10. Next run the melody rnn training command with the configuration argument set to the same type as you used in the previous step. The run directory specifies where your ongoing training record will be stored. The sequence example argument should point to a TF record file containing training melodies, so training underscore melodies, and that is located in the output directory because it was placed there by the last program that we ran or the last command. The default hyperparameter should work fine, so you don't have to include the hparams argument at all. The GitHub readme says if you want to speed things up, you can use the line that has three 64s in it, but I figured that with our Tesla GPU, that wouldn't be an issue. So, Finally, specify the number of training steps. Now you can open a second SSH window and run the melody rnn generate command with the correct configuration specified. The run directory argument should be the same place you specified in the last step. The output directory is wherever you want your generated MIDIs to go. Num outputs or number of outputs specifies how many and the number of steps specifies how long each output file will be. If you set different hyperparameters in the previous step you'll have to copy them here too. Finally you set the primer melody that I mentioned earlier in the video. You can start with just the middle C which would be the number 60. Uh, if you want to do more complex priming negative numbers specify rest time for the previous note. So the example Magenta gives on their website is the first four notes to twinkle twinkle little star which would be 60 negative 2, 60 negative 2, 67 negative 2, 67 negative 2, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so while you're running that, you can watch Siraj Raval videos and periodically use the melody rnn generate command uh, to make new MIDI files. And you can then download your output MIDI files with Jupyter and listen to them using Windows Media Player or VLC or whatever Macs have. There are many different ways to convert them to MP3 on your local machine. You can also use uh, websites that uh, do it for free, like this one. Uh, just make sure to stop your machine when you're done using it. Please subscribe to my YouTube and Patreon for more videos like this one. Thanks.